Well, we can't go anywhere, so let's stay put and let's go gardening. And coming up today in our Let's Go Gardening show, we've got Caroline planting seeds. I'll be showing you my latest creation, my compost bin, and we'll give our answer to that question. Just how long can a garden shed last? They say confession's good for the soul. And so before we start our gardening, I'm going to show you just what state our garden is actually in. There has been a little bit of work already done on this. Phil has taken down a few of the bigger brambles, as you can see there. Over there, behind that very enormous tree, are another two raised beds. We have a lovely camellia over here that can climb through, which is looking really neglected. And there are raspberry canes growing everywhere. So our raised bed has raspberry canes, foxgloves, blackberries. And over this side, we've got ivy. And they've got this, which is really frustrating. I grew some grass seeds about 10 years ago. They were very pretty, but then they started to take over the whole garden and now they're everywhere. Here's my tree peony which I grew from a seed, it's now huge. And it gets really pretty flowers on it. There's some buds, but it's out of control and in a terrible mess, so that needs sorting. And under there, believe it or not, is another small bed. This is the greenhouse. It's a bit of a mess, and this is an improvement. Yesterday, there were two bikes, a bike rack, and a roof box in here too. So Phil cleared those out for me, but now, as you can see, it's in a very sorry state. Here are the bits of wood I was keeping nice and dry so that I could use them on my fire in the garden. And a box of twigs there. Look at the state on these shelves. The miracle grow. It's not very well. If you use some grow more, it's not very well either. I've got an old radio, which hasn't got any batteries in. I took the batteries out in case they corroded. I wonder if that's still working. My little garden container falling apart. My string. I wonder if this has got any strength left in it. Nope, not really. Some of the rubber has come out of the windows. There's lots of moss growing in the gaps of the window there. Hmm, this is going to need a lot of work. But never mind, because we're going to work at it and you can all join us in our journey and see how the garden develops and see what we grow. Here are the remains from when I used to grow things a long, long time ago. I used to grow tons and tons of things. And then I take all the plants over to my allotment and plant them over there as well as my raised beds. But now everything is redundant, but we're going to change all that. We're going to make it all exciting and full of life and vibrancy and hopefully not be surrounded by lots and lots of blackberries. How's it going? Well, we've broken through to civilization. We've gained, I'd say, six to eight foot. Oh, well done, yeah. I'm very moving this. There were no nests in birds, fortunately, otherwise I'd have had to leave it for a few months. Right. But um, as you can see, the fence is starting to show signs of wear. Yeah, it's not very well, is and it? And while I had timber in stock for the fencing over there, which is all used up, that's going to have to wait until lockdown is over and our stores open back up again. But we will very soon, as you can see, have access to this entire bed. You've lost access to that one, I'm sorry. Yes, this is a bit of a mountain. Yes, it is. Put up, put up, put up, put up. Just a bit, just a bit of a mountain. <laughs> and we can't have a bonfire because the garden is too small. So this all has to be put into green bags and taken away and that's going to take weeks. So I don't think we'll be seeing that bed for a, at least a month. This is seeded into here, it had in this area as well, so we'll have cut all that back. 
see this is the original tree. Yep. I'm going to rip those out now. Right. So pull them up by the roots. It's much easier. If I cut them short, I won't be able to pull them after. But uh, not a bad job. You're Maybe getting time it. for lunch. It's progress. And uh, oh, look, mushrooms. Oh, yes. China mushrooms. Mm. I think cute. they were part of our garden deco some years ago. Yes. What was in that big hole? Is that another sinkhole? Um, I think that's where we've dug out the root of a big tree and it's rotting. Right. See all around the tree? Yep. Because there was a huge tree here when we came over a sewer, so it had to be felled because it was going to damage the main sewer line. There you can see our flying buttress. Yes, two of them. Notre yeah. Dame may have flying buttresses, but so have we. Because this fence, when the wind blows, the posts weren't quite put in deep enough and it tends to wobble. So Well, it is very boggy down It there. is. It's like a swamp sometimes. sunny afternoon but a little bit cold so I'm wearing my coat and today I'm going to plant my pepper plants and I've got sweet colour spectrum now these are really pretty I always when I get the choice of between green red and yellow prefer the yellow just for flavour but these ones have got lots of different colours and so we're going to try them out and see what they like see which is our favourite so this time I'm not going to plant them individually I'm planting them in this tree so I've already filled it with some compost. I've lightly pressed it down. Not too hard, remember? Right, just pop a little bit of water on now. Just save me washing the seeds away when I put them in neat little rows. And then it'll be all ready. Now this water I've kept in this watering can in the greenhouse because if you use freezing cold water, when you're watering established plants, it can be a little bit of a shock. And also, this will also give it a head start when it goes into the propagator. It hasn't got to try to raise the freezing cold soil to a nice temperature for a couple of hours. It'll be ready to go. Right, now for the exciting bit, let's open the packet. Ah, now this one has got the little foil pack inside I was telling you about. I prefer this. Give him a tap on a flick. And then all the seeds have gone from the top. If you don't do this, some seeds get stuck in there. You open it, they drop out, and you have no idea where they are. And they can sometimes turn up in a compost in a pot that you're growing something completely unrelated. Right, let's have a little look. See what size these seeds are. Right, there's no way of knowing which plants are going to be which colour. Or are they several colours on the same plant? I don't know. So we're going to pop these in. I think 12 plants will be more than ample for me and I'll probably be able to give some away too. So I'll plant 12 seeds. You don't have to stick these in nice straight lines, but eh, it just appeals to me to have them all coming up like little soldiers. And that way then you can tell as well if there's a space one hasn't germinated or one's a bit late. I have had occasion where very few have germinated, so I've taken those out, left the soil in the propagator, and then a couple of weeks later the seeds have actually germinated. So at least I know now where seeds are and what I'm dealing with. Right, so I'll pop the rest back in here and I'm going to fold the top. This seals them. They last a little bit longer if they're sealed rather than just being exposed to the air. Pop them in. Right, so now we have to cover these with some soil. Now I have this compost here which has already dried out because I left it overnight and it doesn't take long. Normally I cover the compost I leave in here with a sheet of plastic and that way then it doesn't dry out. So I'm going to put it all in a pile here and now we're going to play nursery school fun again. So add a little bit of water, not a lot. You don't want it to be a mud bath. I'll just give it a squidge up. Get a little bit more liquid into this soil. It doesn't really matter if it's not extremely wet because you've already watered the bottom soil. So there we go, that's nice and juicy. And I think we just sprinkle this on. These are nice, easy seeds to see, to know you've covered them. Some seeds, they're black and you can't really tell. And it's so easy to miss them. So make sure we go over every seed and very, very lightly touch the top. I don't like to squash them down at all. 
give them every opportunity to be able to pop their little heads through. Now, one of the reasons why we don't put a lot of soil onto a small seed is because each seed is full of energy and that seed has got enough energy to grow, pop its head out and open two seed leaves. And at that point, the sun shines down and the plant can take the energy from the leaves. If you plant it too deeply, it will try to come up, it'll do its best and at best it'll pop through and be a very weak plant because it's overexerted itself before it even got to soil level. And at worst, it'll run out of steam before it gets to the top and you'll have no seedlings at all. Now these can take between 7 and 21 days to come through. Hopefully it'll be 7, which will be quite exciting. 21 days is an awful lot of time to be waiting to see the little seed heads pop out. So I'll pop my little label in there and then this is going indoors into the heated propagator until they poke the little heads through. I'll keep you posted on how well they grow. Right, time to pop these into the heated propagator. We'll creep away now and let them get on with it because they're having a little kip before they spring up flower and give us lots of peppers. What a compost heap! Yes, um, I don't know if Caroline's mentioned this previously, but this is a project that I've been working on. It took me the best part of a day to get it up and done and in place. It is, as you say, a compost heap. The thing is, I mentioned that we haven't, we've neglected this place for the last two or three years, and we did. Our greenhouse was used as a shed, we had bicycles, we had bike racks, we had roof racks, we had all sorts in there. It took me a day to clear it and find places for everything. But one of the things that we have got to our advantage is that Caroline built these raised beds. Now, apologies for the tacky sort of patch up jobs that I've done on some of the corners, but it is make do and mend at the moment. It is find what you've got. And I've got short pieces of wood. I haven't got long pieces. So I've been renewing the corners, etc. And we'll show you some of that as we go along. But the important thing is that these beds, after all that time, still were easy to turn over because nobody's walked on this ground in 10 years. So that makes it an advantage. The other benefit is that we did have quite a bit of this sort of stuff lying on the grounds because we had mulched it all those years ago. Admittedly, most of it has rotted down and weeds had grown through in places, but it has made life a little lighter for us. But this takes up almost half a bed and this is where the soil comes from around here. Caroline used to compost and the compost goes in every year and just replenishes, replenishes. And the idea is the compost itself will get spread on the bed and this is liftable. We can take the whole thing out, the two of us, simply move it over, plonk it onto the next bed and next year we'll compost over there. But it's totally made out of rubbish I had in the garden. I do get in trouble sometimes for never throwing anything away. You know, it is, I don't know if it's a worldwide mentality, it's definitely a man thing in the valleys. The motto, you never know when it'll come in handy. Well, those of us who live by that motto, we are now being proved right. Because every bit of timber, this top panels, they came off a piece of fence over there we lost during the storms. I'd already bought new timber, but I hadn't had time to do the repair. So during the shutdown, we've done the repair. I've taken the old pieces of timber and used them for the top. The lower part is plywood I picked up from my son's place that he had left over from a job oh, back last year. And I was going to do some shuttering with it. Then we changed our minds. So pinned it all together and it does the job down there. All in all, I'm quite chuffed with my scruffy compost bin. We'll have a look at this compost bin. There's some plywood there, lots of very rotten wood. i show you over that side, you can see just as bad in there too, but perfectly contented because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to win any garden competitions. I just need to make some compost. This uh, overgrowth, as you'll have seen on the video, came right out over these two beds. Where Caroline was standing was the end of the garden. I'm now standing in reclaimed ground from the, from the overgrowth, but still have to work here. The reason we're on stop is we have a collection of green waste once a week. When our bags are full, we have to stop cutting because otherwise it just piles up. So this is next weekend's job after the green waste has gone. 
and then we'll clear this area and we'll have our four beds free and ready for use. Which will be nice. I don't know if you can tell from this angle and this distance, but these beds are not square. They're in a bit of an awkward situation, aren't they? Because I yes. built them. <laughs> I don't build anything properly. I'm just no. a hodgepodge type person. They don't call me the slapdash gardener for nothing. In fact, when you say hodgepodge, this is what I was talking about earlier with the, by the compost heap. Let's this is my latest repair. Look at that. Wow. Stunning, eh? These are offcuts from featherboard that I used to repair the fence. So that's new timber, but offcuts, too short to use. But they're too short, so I've used one, two, three pieces. And by screwing straight through the old timber, which was rotted away, and pinching it into this one, so the screw goes through, through, and through, and sandwich in the old wood. That's exactly the same process as I did with the plywood there that was separated and sandwich it together. It does the job. And this is my bit of hodgepodge Look at this. <laughs> it's a gorgeous obelisk, but it rusted away and two legs are missing. So I just found a little bit of wire and put that stick there. And for this leg, I found another bit of stick. I think it's half a broom handle that's got quite rotten. I tied it on with a bit of string. Ah, when the plants have grown up, nobody will know the difference. The thing is, the, the whole idea of gardening can be extremely off-putting, it's expensive, etc. But it's all down to how you do it. And the fact that we are sort of reusing things now is nothing new for us. We've always reused. I've seen us gather stones and build walls and all sorts of things. And uh, climb into skips to find wood and... Yes, <laughs> for sure. In fact, if you look at the fence there, behind me, the top three foot fence panel, that used to be a six foot fence panel from the floor up, and then the top rotted. So I cut off two foot. I did this about five years ago. Cut off two foot where it was rotted, got a three foot panel, put it on top and made a seven foot fence. I'm now reaching the point in time when I need to get a four foot panel and put it in the bottom. But it does the job. And it meant I didn't have to get a six foot panel, which wouldn't fit in my car. Also, our shed. I've got to show you our shed. Come and see our shed. This is my shed. I built this shed in 1997, Easter of 97. So we are talking 23 years now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah 23 years. But I didn't build it here. We didn't live here 23 years ago. Um, those who have seen our mudlarking videos from down Factory Road area, that's where I lived. And this was in our garden there. So this was built 23 years ago, down in a different garden. I then dismantled it, brought it here some 16 years ago, rebuilt it on this spot, and have bodged it and repaired it and nailed it together and kept it going ever since. And I mean literally nailed it together. The piece of timber at the back there, that went on this week because it was falling apart. These pieces here, they're all replacement pieces and they're not new. That wouldn't look good. Again, what I've done is where the new panel went in, which is directly behind this shed, I've taken the old timber and just blended it in. Just hammered it in place. <laughs> it looks blended it, well, you, it does, you it, can't tell. Which, it looks as rotten as the rest yeah, of the shed. Yeah, that's the so whole point, except the nail's this, a bit shiny. Look at this. Now, this is this is a job in progress. I yes. have to do some work on this, you see? I've got to get this to go in behind there. <laughs> but what I can do is do on the front here what I did up there at the back. Put the timber all the way down, pinch it in. I've got to do another repair. I've got the piece of glass to go in the glass. <laughs> and it's a shed. I've got to show you Phil's locking mechanism for the door. This is our pile of wood that Phil's slowly working through. And this is our door locking mechanism. Oops, you can see my shadow. It's a bit of a bench because the hinges fell off because the door post was so rotten. And now they're completely stiff so they can't be repaired. And if you take this away, the door just falls open and lands on the floor. Yeah, I'll show you how my door opens now. You just take away the lock. <laughs> the very small and obtrusive lock. You unlock the door. You turn this little latch. And then and the then door lands on you. <laughs> One door. And then in there we've got our bikes and our mower and our gas for the barbecue, etc, etc. But this again is a job in progress. Yes. Because these hinges are very, very stiff. And if I can't free them up, I'll have a search through the rubbish in my garage and I guarantee I will find a pair of hinges. They may not match, 
but they'll do the job. And there'll be inches on this quite shortly. The only problem is, by the time Phil finishes all the jobs, more bits of shed have fallen off and rotted away. Yeah. So I don't think this shed is ever going to be perfect. It's but still. It's going to be perfect. It looks like a grow there. And something I learned only yesterday, we've got the Jeff Hamilton collection. We've got his vegetable garden, we've got his cottage gardens, we've got his paradise series. So we're watching those. And yesterday he put one of these on top of something he'd built. And he said it's two very important reasons. One, to hide the bad joint underneath. And two, it seems that very importantly, years ago, they put those there to stop the devil sitting on the top. So there we go. today. Phil is off camera out there. You may see him moving back and forth. He's trying to repair one of my raised beds and we're going to plant some sweet corn. Incredible F1. So let's have a look. Is this loose or in a foil pack? I would say loose. I don't think I've ever had sweet corn that comes in the internal foil package. They sound pretty loose to me. Yes, there they are. Now you may say, well, that just looks like some dried popcorn. It's basically the same sort of thing. Right, pop it back in. Now, I like to give my sweet corn a really good root run. And to get them started, instead of starting them in little pots, I start them in toilet rolling sides. Very cheap way of doing this. You can buy special long tubes for the garden, but I don't like spending money, so this is perfect for me. Right, I found a little diggy thingy. That is useful for getting the lump smaller and you don't get quite so ingrained under your fingernails then. So let's give all our compost a little bit of a rake through. It's nice and fluffy and airy with no huge lumps. Again, potting compost is better than general purpose compost. But you know me, if I don't need to spend extra money, I won't. Right, and now we have to fill these tubes. Now there's an obvious problem. You can see straight through. So what I do is hold them in my hand. It takes a while, it is a bit fiddly, filling these tubes. Again, you want to push it down, but not too hard. Just firm it gently. Firm it gently. Is that an ox oxymoron? Hmm. And then pop it in quick. Now we take the rest out because they're just getting in the way. And we have 12 of these to do, so it's going to take quite a while. Now this time, because the seeds are bigger, you may remember I told you the bigger the seed, the deeper it can go, or the more you can cover it. So what I do with these, I tend to make a hole and pop the seed in then rather than cover it. It's less fiddly. And when you're working with these tubes, less messy because the hole at the top isn't very big for just putting soil into or compost. So it's, it doesn't take too long. The knack is getting it down before it all falls out of the bottom. As you can see, I've done this before. When I had my allotment going, I do this to about 50 plants and you get quite the practice then. Now, with these seeds, you can plant them individually. They advise you to plant two and then pull out the weaker. I tend to plant two per toilet roll tube, but then leave them grow together because they tend to support each other a little better then because we do get quite high winds sometimes. So I'm getting smaller plants, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. For me, that works. But what I might do this year, just as a little experiment, since we've got lots of time on our hands, is take out the weaker seedling when they grow from half and leave some as doubles. And we can compare then, see how well it does. Because there are lots of things in the gardening world that have been said for years and years, and they've never actually been proven. And then I don't know if any of you heard of the thing about pruning rose bushes. And there's always been, you have to carefully do it, an outward facing bud, three buds from the bottom of the stem. And now they found that you'll get possibly more flowers by pruning them with a chainsaw. So not everything that we think is true is true. So we will find out by doing a little experiment of our own. Some will have the weaker seedling pulled out and some won't. There we go, we now have 12 tubes to put our sweet corn in. Mm, some of them are not as topped up as they could be. They are. Give that a little bit of an extra top up. Right, now we need to make a hole and pop our seeds in. 
For this, you can buy something technical called a dibber, or you can use a stick. Guess which one I'm using. So then we just make a hole. Rather than make two holes in these, I don't know if it's for the best, but it's what I do. I make a slightly larger hole and put both seeds into the same hole. So that's a nice easy bit. It's quite therapeutic as well. Making a nice little hole to pop your seeds into. Right, let's have a look. In this packet are 50 seeds, I think, so quite a lot. So I'm sure there are gardeners everywhere saying, no, you can't put two just like that in the tube. They may be right, we'll find out. That's one thing for my gardening. I tend to be, I love gardening, but I'm very slapdash. I think, well, you've got to be hardy to survive in my garden because I don't mollycoddle things. And I don't have that much bad luck considering I am so ruthless with my plants. Do you feel sewing in the background? My raised beds are quite rotten. And Phil's just dug out that horrible green grass thing I showed you. And now he's repairing all the wooden panels around it. Right, we don't need the rest of those. Now, we just cover them over. Now, you may have noticed I didn't water this first. And the reason for that is I don't really feel that I need to water first because these are going to absorb such a lot of water because the toilet roll centres will absorb quite a lot of the water and I'll probably need to water them two or three times today. There we go. All nicely cosied up. If I just left these dry with no extra water, they'd suck out all the water and the soil would be quite dry and crispy by the morning. I'll check on these this evening, make sure if they've dried up, they'll get another splurge of water. And a final touch is my rather grubby looking seed label. I've used these for years. I just rub out the words and put on the new words. So this is going in and this is Sweet Gold Incredible F1. Well, there we are. There's a little look around the garden that the jobs are doing. We'll keep giving you progress reports and updates. And I hope all those who I've been answering comments to have been saying, love to see your garden. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope everyone else has got into it too. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget, give us a thumbs up and most importantly, share it with anyone that you think would like a little bit of the outdoors to look at at these particular times. Until the next time then, bye for now. Bye.